Honorable Chief Minister, Guest of Honor, other dignitaries on the dais, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to talk about empowering education in a globalized economy. Empowering education in a globalized economy. And by virtue of having worked in India, in the Middle East, Africa, and Southeast Asia, uh, I'll try and give you a perspective in the next five minutes or so about my thoughts on how we are doing here. So if you look at emerging education landscape in the globalized economy, A, we are talking about coverage. And when I mean coverage, the global literacy rate is still today, I mean, if you go by 2013 average, it's about 84.1%. And if you look at the GER, the enrollment ratio, it's at about 33%. Clearly, there is room for us to cover more students and more people under the, under the education schemes. The second point I would like to make is about scalability, where we need to recruit today, for 2030, we need to recruit about 26 million school teachers to provide primary education to children. So 26 million school teachers by 2030. We have in India about 20 million higher education students as of today. Now what does all this mean? So you cover more area, you bring in more people uh, under the education ambit, you scale the operations. But it also leads to too many people available and too few jobs. So unemployment today has to also got to be fixed. So when you're fixing on one side the supply and the demand also needs to be fixed. So therefore, I think I'm told, I was reading somewhere that for, for 370 odd peon positions, there were more than 23 lakh applications. And I believe a lot of them were PhDs. Look at the second aspect of uh, what we are grappling with today is in the area of automation replacing entry-level jobs. And you would have read in the, in the papers just a couple of weeks back when even the IT companies, which normally used to hire in hordes, are actually thinking about cutting down. And in maybe three or five years down the line, some of the entry-level jobs in IT sector itself could possibly be replaced by automation. We are talking about employability. And I'd like you to focus on the word employability. It means employ ability. Employ ability is employability. We are today, if you look at uh, some of the developing countries, the employability quotient is about 20%, which means what we teach and what the industry requires in the form of skill sets or in the form of uh, uh, requirements is actually very, very low. So it is, we, need to we need to improve the employability quotient as, as, as global entities. And why are we doing all this? Well, we are doing all this, we are doing it for a population which is completely different. We're talking about young generation, we're talking about technology-enabled trainers, we're talking about different forms and methods of teaching and training. So very clearly, what we are teaching today is what we think from our experiences in the past. And we're teaching today's students for the future, which itself is uncertain. So let me say this again. What we teach today is based on our experience, experiences in the past for the future, which itself is uncertain. So that is the kind of problem, that is the scale and magnitude of challenge that we face today. We, there's, there's, there's definitely a need to constantly transform the education, global education landscape. And I'll talk to you a bit before I finish my talk about what transnational higher education is all about. But closer home, there are a lot of opportunities. For example, India today, unlike other countries where the population is aging, in India, we don't seem to have a problem. In the near future, India is likely to become the skill sourcing hub for maybe the entire globe. So the number of people, the kind of age groups that we have today, I think we are very well positioned that if we focus on education and developing skill sets, we are likely to be the sourcing uh, unit for the entire globe. Training and certifications uh, focus on skills, therefore is very, very relevant for jobs. It is important to improve 
what I talked about, the employability quotient. That is, that is the key for, for challenge today. Technology, I won't talk too much about it because I know there are many people who will come and talk to you about technology challenges and how technology is one of the key enablers to education. Suffice it to say that uh, with, with education, uh, education going more technology oriented, uh, a lot of this space will we'll see a lot more people getting educated and a lot more people getting, uh, getting into this education bandwagon. Last but not the least is uh, in terms of, uh, uh, it is not just enough to get a degree. It is just not enough to uh, get something under your belt. It is important today to continuously educate oneself. So even when you get a degree, midway through your career, end, end point through your career, at each point, it is important for you to reskill, retool, refresh your knowledge. Because otherwise, in this changing world, it is, it is quite likely that some of us will get outdated. Having said that, uh, what are the key opportunities in the, in the globalized economy? And I did talk to you a bit about the aging of, golden, uh, of global population. That's advantage India. As population outside of India, other countries become more old, the, the employable age, that brand, India is very well positioned. We can become the sourcing for all of the rest of the world. There is a need to increase both government and private funding in terms of education. And if you really look at the last three to four years, uh, the spend on, on education has pretty much remained stable as we, as we see. So therefore, I think, and I'm sure that uh, there are people talking about how we can improve or increase the kind of spend that education sector definitely needs. Uh, technology as an enabler is something very key, and I think we all of us need to ensure that technology, whether it's in primary education, secondary education, or even training or executive education, forms a big, big role. How can we build a system for to, to get more educated and skilled talent? I think innovation in teaching is something that I'd like to touch upon today. And, and let me tell you a small incident, I mean, the, a small study that we did. We realized that, uh, you know, as a student, what are the different ways that a student would like to connect? Today, a student would like to see more of simulation, games. Otherwise, he would like to see videos. Otherwise, he'd like to listen to some audio. The last thing he likes is to sit in a classroom and be lectured using slides or a teacher talking to him directly. And if you see the teaching system today, it is exactly inverse of what the students want. So therefore, there is a need to bring in a different set, a different paradigm as far as the way we impart education and skill sets is, is really concerned. So I think that, is, that, is, that, is, that to me is very, very critical. And that is how we need to connect to the youth and get away. I did talk to you a bit about the globalization models, what the world is doing. A Couple of weeks back, I was in, uh, in Kuala Lumpur. I had the chance to go and visit a university there called XMU, Xiamen University of uh, China, but it's Xiamen University Malaysia now. They've, there's an investment of 1.3 billion ringgits for a 150-acre land with a total floor space of about 470,000 square, square meters. 10,000 students' capacity offering foundation and undergraduate programs. The scale at which people are talking abroad is amazing. I also happened to run the, the university in, in, in Dubai, in Middle East. And while a lot of us are there, there's Manipal, there's Bits Pilani, there is uh, SPJ and the Ryan T. The, the pace at which the Dubai government is creating zones for education and the amount of investment they are putting in into those places and who are the students? 10,000 students, 10,000 enrollments are of Indians alone. So there are Indians who are also studying abroad who, who are getting the different kind of education. So I think it's important to take on board the fact that globalization of education is, has come, or is coming of age. And I think it's very important to, to realize that this is what maybe the future of education is all about. And it's important for all of us to embrace that and ensure that we are in sync with what is going to happen for the future of education. In summary, we need to expand coverage, improve scalability, reduce unemployment, make people more employable, 
and all this in an environment where people, technology, education itself is changing at an amazing speed. Thank you very much.